Welcome back everybody, Patrick here. In this question, we have to take this cubic function 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 27 and we have to graph it and we have to label all the intercepts. So whenever we're given a function like this, what you want to do is you want to first know what the degree is. So the degree of this function is 3, it's a cubic function. What's the leading coefficient? Leading coefficient is this 2. So this function has an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient. And that's going to help us when we graph when we are figuring out the end behaviors. Next, let's figure out what the y-intercept is because we're going to have to label that on the graph anyway. Y-intercept is super easy. We just plug in 0 for all the x's. And if we plug in 0 for all the x's, we're just left with this negative 27. So we know the y-intercept is going to be negative 27. Now the tricky part, finding the x-intercept or x-intercepts, if there even are any. So the way we do that is we have to solve when does this function equal 0, right? For what x values is the y value going to be 0? So what we have to do is we have to factor this, and we have to use factor theorem. Because if it's a degree that is greater than 2, we can't just use the quadratic formula or factor it using decomposition. We have to use factor theorem, do long division until we get to a quadratic. So what we do is we start plugging in values. So if we plug in f of 1, what's f of 1 going to be? Well, if we plug in 1 for all the x's, we'd have 2 plus 9, which is 11, minus 27, which would give us negative 16. So f of 1 doesn't equal 0. We're basically looking for a number where if we plug it in for the x's, it's going to equal 0 because then we'll know that that's an x-intercept, and then we can have a factor and then do long division. If we plug in f of negative 1, that won't equal 0 either. We could try 2, we could try negative 2, perhaps 3, negative 3. So sometimes you got to go pretty far until you get a 0. If we plug in 2 for the x's, we wouldn't get 0. If we plug in negative 2, won't get 0. If we plug in 3, won't get 0. But if we plug in negative 3, we do get 0. Right? So if we plug in negative 3 for all the x's in this equation, we would get 0. So we know that this function has an x-intercept at negative 3 for sure. And since we know that, by the factor theorem, that means that x plus 3 is a factor of that polynomial right there, of that cubic function. So what we can do now, since we know that x plus 3 is a factor, we can take that factor, x plus 3, and see how many times it goes in to that function that we're given. 2x cubed plus 9x squared. Notice how there's no uh, coefficient for x, so we would put 0x here, a placeholder, minus 27. So now we're doing long division with that factor that we found because negative 3 is an x-intercept. So how many times does x go into 2x cubed? Well, it goes in 2x squared times. 2x squared times x gives us 2x cubed. 2x squared times 3 gives us 6x squared. Then when we subtract these, we'd end up with 3x squared. This would be 0x minus 27. How many times does x go into 3x squared? Uh, 3x times. 3x times x gives us 3x squared. 3x times 3 gives us 9x. When we subtract these, these cancel out 0x minus positive 9x gives us negative 9x minus 27. How many times does x go into negative 9? Well, negative 9 times. So then we'd be left with negative 9x, negative 9 times positive 3 gives us negative 27. When we subtract these, notice that we get a remainder of 0. And we know 
that we should be getting a remainder of zero because x plus three is a factor. So when we divide the polynomial that we're working with, with a factor, you should always get a remainder of zero. If you're not getting, getting a remainder of zero here, you did something wrong, most likely with the algebra, but you may have miscalculated uh, that factor. So maybe f of negative three wasn't equal to zero. And if it wasn't, then x plus three isn't a factor. However, x plus, um, if you do plug in negative three, you do get zero, x plus three is a factor, and we got this remainder of zero. So we can be pretty confident that we are on the right track. So what we can do at this point is we can take this function and we can break it down into that factor we found x plus three and this quotient here, two x squared plus three x minus nine. So if I erase all of this here, So notice how we're taking this expanded polynomial and we are slowly breaking it down. We are factoring it. So we factored it into x plus three and then this quadratic here. And then this quadratic, we just have to factor it now. And I believe this will factor smoothly. So what we can do is we can do decomposition. A times C is negative 18. And then the B value is three. So what two numbers multiply to negative 18 and add up to three? Well, six and negative three, right? Those two work. So we can decompose that three X into six X minus three X minus nine. Now, just a heads up that you may have a different way to factor this. This is the way that I do it, but, um, whatever works as long as you're getting the correct answer basically this quadratic will factor into x plus 3 2x minus 3. so going back to our original polynomial we have x plus 3 which we started with at the beginning and now we took this quadratic and factored it into these two factors x plus 3 and then 2x minus 3. so to make this look nicer Notice how these uh, are the same factors, so we can multiply those. We can just write them out squared, 2x minus 3. So now we took our function and we fully factored it. And now it's easy to find the rest of the x-intercepts. We just let this equal to 0. Well, this bracket we already took care of, x plus three, when does it equal zero? Well, when x is equal to negative three. But notice that here, this negative three has an order two. We didn't know that before. We just knew that negative three was an x-intercept, but now we know that this negative three x-intercept has an order of two. So on the graph, it's gonna bounce off that x-intercept. And then the other x-intercept 2x minus 3, when does it equal 0? Well, when x is equal to 3 over 2, or 1.5. So that is our other x-intercept, 3 over 2. And now we can take all of this information, and we can make a fairly accurate graph. Um, so let me uh, just write this here. x plus 3 squared, 2x minus 3. So both of these are the same. So let's use this uh, information to make a graph. First thing, let's label all of the intercepts. So we have an x-intercept at negative three, that would be here. And then we have an x-intercept at three over two or 1.5. So that would be like, let's say here. So this is a three over two. We also have a y-intercept at negative 27. So let's say that's like down here. And we know that this has an odd degree, a degree of three and a positive leading coefficient of two. So an odd degree, a positive leading coefficient, what are the end behaviors gonna be? 
Well, we know that it's going to start in quadrant three and end in quadrant one. So that's how the end behaviors are going to look. So let's, uh, let's sketch this. So as we move up, we're going to hit this x-intercept here. Notice this negative three has an order of two, so it's going to bounce off that negative three. Then it's going to go through that y-intercept of negative 27, and then go through that x-intercept of 3 over 2, and then hit that other end behavior in the first quadrant. So that there is a graph of a potential graph of this function. We labeled all of the intercepts, the two x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. Now the shape might be different. Like, uh, I'm not even sure if this function maybe goes like that. Maybe it turns here. Uh, I made it turn here in the graph. Not too sure, but we're not getting into that much detail in this course. Basically, the most important thing is you know the end behaviors, the x-intercepts, and the y-intercepts, and then you're good to go.